Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to my cabin once again. I thought I'd do another of my little stats interlude videos, looking again at the marathon. This time I think I'll look at some halfway splits and do some analysis. So I found uh, on the London Marathon 2019, they conveniently had the your half marathon split alongside the full results. So I was able to download them into my spreadsheet and uh, did some analysis. So this little video is what I've found so far. I hope it will lead to further analysis and some interesting debate. So let's get stuck in. So this is the London Marathon 2019 results page. And so if I sh show 1000 results per page, this is all the amateur runners in commas, and you get their half marathon time as long as their finishing time. And I did the same with the women to get the, the top 1000 women page by page. So what I did is I took all everyone who'd finished two, three hours, 30. That includes also the elite, which are on a separate page. I chose 3.30 because then that would give me a fair number of women. So the, remember the last time I did a video, I was only looking at three hours and there wasn't quite so many women. So I wanted to have an objective view if there's any sort of gender bias here in these results. It's interesting, actually, if you look at the elite women's race here, there was a huge negative split because uh, Bridget Koskai went through halfway and won 11.38 along with a few others and she pushed on to a 2.18 whereas the rest of them either didn't speed up quite as much or fell away. And if we look in the men it's a very similar story. Kipchoge went through the halfway in uh, 1 hour 1.37 along with a few others and again he pushed on the most with a negative split and then the others did also a slight negative split but some of them obviously didn't run as fast including Mo who was up there but then fell away. So this graph here shows all the sub 330 runners with uh, analysis of their first half and second half splits. So along the x-axis here, the horizontal axis, I've got their number of minutes differential between their first and second half. So if it was like zero, that means they did an um, exactly even split. If it's negative, that means they sped up slightly in the second half. So a so-called negative split. So say minus two would meant they ran the second half two minutes quicker than the first. And conversely, if it's on this side, then they slow down in the second half. And on this axis is the percentage of runners had this halfway split range. So, so as you can see here, about 11% of runners either did a exact um, even split or were slightly negative. This is like a cumulative graph. And the number of runners was just under 7,000. It's around about 6,800. So a fairly good sample size here. And this is both men and women all together. So what do we reckon is the optimum pacing strategy? Well, that's probably a, a subject for another debate. I mean, you would think that the obvious one is an even split. But London, don't forget, has a slightly easier first half. So you might think actually a slightly positive split might be the optimum. But even if you go out to a two-minute um, differential here or better, then as I said, it's only about 30% of all the runners. And then if we come on to, say, 50% of all the runners doing sub 330, it's around about a four-minute positive split. Now, one thing I wanted to do is to see whether there's any gender bias here. So what I've done is I've also done a similar graph just for men and women. So the orange line here is the female graph. The blue one is the overall one. And then, as you might expect, uh, because of symmetry, the male one is that yellow one at the bottom. And you can see there's not much in it. I mean, the general trend is very much similar. So it's not like all women are excellent at pacing and all men are bad. But you can definitely see that there's slightly more women who are doing a, a better sort of even pace strategy than the men. Although the difference is perhaps only sort of a 5% line. I also wanted to see whether there was any sort of age bias to the pacing, which you might think that the, the people are older and wiser. It doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. So this graph again, you've got the the, the sort of the, the light blue line is the overall graph, and the grey gr graph is everyone who is uh, under forty, and then the blue graph at the bottom is basically those who are forty or over. And the split between those two age bands is actually more or less equal. So it was quite a good examination of it to uh, to do. And what I thought was quite interesting here is that the grey graph is slightly higher at the start. So it does seem to imply that there's actually sl slightly more younger runners doing a sort of an even split, even a neg slightly negative split, around to about three or four minutes positive split when it seems to sort of join up together. And then at the converse end, there's perhaps slightly more runners who sort of almost sort of blown up and doing 
you know, I've got like this out to 15 minutes positive split here. But I think generally you could say that there's not really a huge amount of age bias in the split strategy. What I also wanted to do is sort of ban this and I'd rather do it on a graph. I've done it as a, a spreadsheet of numbers. So perhaps these bottom rows here are the more interesting because these are the banded. So I've done it into those um, 230 or better, 230 to 245, up to 245 to three hours, three hours to 315, 315 to 330. Then I've done it again as overall and men and women. The percentages I've highlighted here are the overall number of runners who've done a, a negative split. And as you can see, there's not really a huge difference in the bandings here. There seems to be, for some reason, less runners doing it just outside the three-hour mark than there are just inside that. But maybe that's just a statistical quirk. And if we move over to the men, then we find, because the men are the bulk of the overall, these percentages are fairly similar. If we compare that with the women, the elite women, because of the, the, the way the race was run, so they had a very high percentage of negative splits, I think because they rather sort of took it easy in inverted covers on the first half. So I think, you know, that's literally six runners out of 15 making for that high total. But when you start adding in a lot more women, we do see the slightly high percentage of those you saw on the graph there, 14% in the 315 to 330 category. But again, if you compare these percentages with the men, there's not really a huge difference there. And it would be hard to argue that we, we, on this basis that women are better paces than the men in terms of a more even strategy. So I um, hope you found this little uh, stats interlude interesting. Um, a lot of uh, topics for debate, I think. I think next time I'm going to try and see if I can analyse what the actual half marathon PBs of these runners and see how close they were to their half marathon PB at halfway. That might be give a better indication of whether they had the right strategy. So please comment below on what is your optimum strategy for the halfway split and would you have done anything better in the races you've done to think with a, with a better result? My half marathon split in my PB was about three minutes slower than my actual half marathon PB and my second half that day was again three minutes slower than my first. I think I felt that was sort of a reasonable strategy. I, I was going hard on the first half and not flat out and I was probably working as hard in the second half as in the first half. Because you get the slight element of the, the, the early downhill miles in London. This was in London, by the way. And uh, obviously the fatigue is starting to set in. So you feel like you're working harder, but obviously the stopwatch is, it tends to be getting slower. I mean, my most recent Seville Marathon, I think I did a very slight negative split. I think it was through halfway in 128s and bits and came in with a 256. So I think I just slightly did a negative split there. So that was quite nice. But you always wonder, could I have actually run any quicker? So I think some further analysis of what these people have done against their PBs will be for the next topic. And I hope you found this interesting and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Okay, bye.